Hi, welcome to Counterpunch, the show that uh, exposes the unfolding world communist revolution. Please like the show, share the show, and especially subscribe on Epoch TV. Today I'm going to talk about the communists' greatest weapon. And it's not something you think about, it's not nuclear weapons, it's not, uh, it's not propaganda, it is the peace movement. That is the communist's main weapon for conquering this planet. Now, with tensions escalating in Eastern Europe as Russia threatens to invade the Ukraine, we're seeing the peace movement spring into action. And that's to be expected. It is a weapon of the Russians, it's a weapon of the broader Chinese communist movement, and it's there to basically weaken West Western resolve in defending the Ukraine, to weaken NATO, and pave the way for a Russian invasion of the Ukraine and a Russian conquest of Europe and eventual world communist domination. Now the communist use of peace as a weapon goes back to Lenin's time. You know, his famous promise to the Russian people, support the revolution, help us overthrow the Tsars. We will give you peace, land and bread, the big slogan. In other words, surrender to communism, help us on our mission and we will give you peace. Well, what do they mean by peace? During the 1980s, a friend of mine, a New Zealander, trained in Moscow as a communist at Lenin's Institute for Higher Learning. Three and a half thousand students there. And he, it was uh, explained to him by one of the professors at the time, uh, Comrade Medvedev. He said something like this. He said, he said to my friend John, he said, there are many clever people in the Soviet Union, but no one has ever come up with a weapon as powerful as the peace movement. Communists are always talking about peace and democracy. Now, peace to us means absence of war. To the communists, it is something different. The main driver of conflict in the world, the class struggle, will only end with the final victory of communism. Therefore, that's when we have peace. So therefore, peace is when communism takes control. So they're sincere when they say they believe in peace, but their definition of peace is complete communist control. And the same with democracy, their other favorite word. We believe it means constitutional government. We believe it means rule of law, majority rule, things like that. And just to be clear, um, I believe in a constitutional republic is, is even better than democracy. It's uh, even better for the rights of the people. But most people understand democracy as a synonym for freedom to most people. To communist democracy means rule by the people. But who are the representatives of the people? The communists are the representatives of the people. So therefore democracy means communist rule. So following that logic, the peace movement as defined by communists is a movement designed to weaken anti-communism, to disarm anti-communism, to divide all forces opposed to communism. In 1950, the Soviets established their first international communist front. It was called the World Peace Council. Now, the World Peace Council was a big organization that had branches all over the world. Originally, the first campaigns they mounted were against American involvement in the Korean War, against Western involvement in the Korean War, because they wanted the Korean communists to win that war. Then they backed the International Stockholm Appeal. That was a, run by the World Peace Council, supported by communist parties all over the world, basically calling for US nuclear disarmament. And of course, if the US disarmed, the Soviets would have a monopoly on nuclear weapons and they could use it to defeat the West. Later they started campaigns against the Vietnam War, against NATO in Europe, because again the communists understood that the North Atlantic Treaty Organization was the only thing stopping them from conquering the whole of Europe as a stepping stone to conquering the rest of the planet. In the 1980s, Reagan and Thatcher were pretty strong. They were very both anti-communists. They understood peace through strength, and they resisted Russian-backed peace movement attempts to destroy NATO. And I've talked about this before. So the Soviets actually turned to New Zealand, my home country, and they used the New Zealand Peace Council, which was run by communist leaders like Bill Anderson and Ken Douglas and Barney Richards, 
to get New Zealand to ban nuclear warships from its harbours. This destroyed the Australia-New Zealand-United States military alliance. The goal of that was not to prepare New Zealand for a Soviet invasion. The goal of it was to encourage the European peace movement to break up NATO. Fortunately for us, it didn't work in the long run. But New Zealand is now very vulnerable to communist China as a result of no longer being in an alliance with the United States. And we must be very clear, the Russians and the Chinese are working closely together. They have done for a long time. They are allied in the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, a political, military, economic alliance, and have been since 2001. They held the world's largest military exercise together outside St. Petersburg a couple of years ago. So this idiot talk we hear from some people about helping the Ukraine would drive Russia towards China is absolutely fallacious. Russia and China are already joined at the hip. If we succumb to this, if we abandon the Ukraine as this World Peace Council and Russian propaganda advises us to do, 40 million Ukrainians will be set up for mass slaughter, subjugation and reincorporation into the Soviet Empire. Is that really where we want to go, folks? So, as Reagan said, the only lasting peace comes through strength and unity. Only if the world stands with the Ukraine and puts massive sanctions on Russia and supports the Ukraine in a unified fashion will the Russian communists back off. And I call them communists, folks, because they are. Only if we stand strong will they back off. If we don't stand strong, if we back, if we back away from our from Western obligations to the Ukraine. We're setting those people up for a mass slaughter and we have only ourselves to blame for what comes next. If we lose the Ukraine, we will lose Europe. If we lose Europe, we lose the world. That is guaranteed. So I hope you found this interesting, people. I hope this gives you a bit more perspective on the massive amounts of Russian and Chinese propaganda that's being pumped into our TV sets and newspapers every single day. I hope it makes you understand what's at stake here and how we need to stand with the West. We need to stand together. We need to back the Ukraine in their moment of need. So thanks very much for watching. Um, Please, as I said, please like the show, share the show, pass this around as much as possible. We're at a crisis point here, a very critical point in world history, and we must stand together against communism or we shall all be communists in the not too distant future. So thanks again for watching. I'll sign out, I'll sign out now. Remember, only truth can save us now. So God bless you all. God bless America. God bless the Ukraine and every freedom-loving person on this planet. Thank you so much.